If you don't want your cute face on the cloud, then you can shut your video off or you can keep it on. It doesn't matter. I don't show your faces very often anyway. And let me go to share screen. Ooh. Let me sure, make sure I'm doing share computer sound and optimize screen share. Every time you quit out of Zoom and open it up again, you have to make sure those two little buttons are on. I know you can't see them right now, which is why I talk out loud all the time but you wanna make sure you're sharing your computer sound so that if you play a video that the sound comes through. And I am in the KCC library, hanging out with Meg is here. I don't know if Ellie's still here. Okay, let me do present. Okay, so if you're in the right place, you're here to chat about, learn about, dive into intermediate and advanced learning plans. The two sessions we've done today already that I have not put up yet, but they're getting right there processing are landing pages and beginning playlists. Beginning playlist is like the more simple version of an intermediate or advanced learning plan. So all three of them are very much related. They just have different degrees of details. So you might have been using a basic plan and now you want to upgrade it or you just want to learn about the differences, whatever it is that you want to be able to do. Why ever you're here is fine. And like I've said before, if you just want to tune me in like a radio station, you can. If you want to watch later, you can. Or if you want to ask me questions, um, if there's something in the chat, I didn't ask for a, um, there's only like eight of you in here right now. So if you have a question and I don't see it, go ahead and just unmute yourself and ask it or help me out with that. So let's see. Um, Actually, Susie, I even... can I ask a question right off the bat? <laughs> yes. Um, let me think how I want to word this. <laughs> so when we like discuss it in like PLCs or staff meetings or whatever, the terms playlist and learning plan sometimes become interchangeable, mm -hmm. but sometimes when people say playlists, they specifically mean the Monday through Friday sort of schedule one. So I guess I'm just looking for like some clarification so mm -hmm. people aren't confused. I was okay. confused. I'm confused every time we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, playlist, a beginning playlist should be just called a playlist because it's like the beginning of these three types of playlists. So the beginning one, you're right, it does have the Monday through Friday and it has what you should do each of those days. It doesn't have any standards on it. It doesn't have any um, differentiation to it. It doesn't have, um, like you learn about it and then the on how you're going to demonstrate your understanding. It's just a list of things to do. And a lot of us created those back in the spring and maybe didn't call them playlists. We call list you called them a calendar you called them this week you called it a whatever so they're just being called a playlist through the modern teacher platform just so we're all using the same term some people are using those some other people are beefing it up and using either the intermediate or the advanced learning plan which is what we're talking about in this session so it's not just a list of days you don't even need to make that if you are not going to use a basic plan. You're just going to go right to making it more in depth. So you really only have to choose one. And for some buildings, I know that there's a recommendation for one over the other, and I'm not sure about all the buildings. So some of you have more choice than others just to, as to how you're going to put it up. I think it also has to do with grade level. Probably the youngers, all they need really is a simple playlist, but you'll figure that out as you go along. So a playlist is just a simpler version of a learning plan, and you usually only have to choose one of the three. Does that help a little? It helped a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay, I'm going home now. All right, let's see. So I can't read what I put on my little chalkboard. Standards and choice. So that's basically what's gonna stand out your intermediate and advanced plans. And we'll go through afterwards just so that you have an even more clear understanding as we go through. So I am gonna bring us to a video. So when you're creating especially advanced and intermediate learning plans, you are doing a ton of creating links inside your doc or inside your Google Slides or wherever you're creating it. Um, so 
I'm going to share this video because it's just a nice review on how to do it. I actually like Hello Teacher Lady. I like her, um, her, what's the word I'm looking for? Tutorials. I knew it started with a T. And so her stuff is good. She's a good one to subscribe to as well. But let me, give me a thumbs up if you can hear it once it starts because I messed up earlier. There's like loud music. Okay, good. <laughs> In this video, you'll learn how to create internal links in Google Docs. You can use this trick to create something simple like a table of contents or something more elaborate like an interactive choice board or hyperdoc. I'll start with a couple quick examples so you can see how it works. Here's a doc that I created for a PD session that I did. To make navigation on the doc easier, I added a table of contents, and if you click on any of the links, it takes you directly to that particular section in the doc. Then I added this little link down here, which takes you back to the top. Here's another interactive doc I made that's part of a digital choice board. To keep student work all in one place, I included a responses section below the choice board, and I posted this in Google Classroom and selected make a copy for each student. This gives every student their own copy. They can click the links and type in the responses section for any of the choices that they select. And then I included this little navigation menu in the footer so that students can easily return back to the choice board when they're done typing their response. Okay, so now that you've seen the end result, let's talk about how to actually create the links. I'm just gonna open a blank Google Doc here and we'll go through the process. So first you need to know about this drop down here. These are your default styles for headers and text in Google Docs, and we'll come back to those in a minute. So I'm just gonna type a few random lines here. I'll give it a title, a heading, subheading, and then I'll just copy some dummy text here just to like give it the feel of an actual document. And then I'll apply the styles. So here's my title, come back up. I'll do heading one for heading. I'll do heading two for my subheading. And then my normal text is my normal text. And for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to copy and paste this to give the document some length. Okay, so you can see that it changed like the size of the text and the headings and all of that, but behind the scenes, it's actually creating a document outline. So if you come up here to view and then show document outline, you can see that basically a traditional outline pops up off to the side here. And you can click on the headings and subheadings and that's pretty helpful all by itself. We can now take this a step further and create a clickable table of contents at the top of the actual doc. So to do that, we're going to click insert table of contents. And we have two options here of what we want our table of contents to look like. I'll just start with this one with the blue links. You can see that each of the headings and subheadings has been added to the top and turned into clickable links. For like multi-page documents, you could also use this version of the table of contents that includes the page number for each of the headings and subheadings. And you can click on these too, even though they don't look like traditional links. If you add additional headings, you can see that it automatically updates the document outline, but you'll need to manually update the table of contents by clicking the refresh icon up here. You didn't even hear what I just said. I totally just messed up. I was double checking to make sure that I was recording, which I was, and then I ended up going off the page. So I'm fired. I need to go home now. Let's go back up, Susie, to the previous one. Susie, Let me can I, play. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah. Is there any way that videos, I found this situation yesterday, maybe it's just my 57 year old eyes, but, um, is there any way for the video that's on that easel to take up your whole screen to make it bigger for us? That's a great question. Let's try it. I'm gonna hit play and then I'll hit the grow button and we'll see what it does. I'm gonna try and zoom ahead to where she was too. Oh, crying out loud. Easily return back to the choice board when they're done subheading like the size of the text and the heading and that's pretty helpful all by it look like i'll just start with this one with the blue links okay you can see that see. each of the headings and subheadings has been added to the top and turned into clickable links for like multi-page documents 
All right, I paused it. So you could also use this version of the table of contents that includes the page number for each of the headings and subheadings. Way, way and better. you can click on these two, even though they don't look like traditional links. If you add additional headings, you can see that it automatically updates the document outline, but you'll need to manually update the table of contents by clicking the refresh icon up here. As a side note, you can also download your doc as a PDF and the links will remain intact. So just come up here to File, Download, and then select PDF Document. And you can see an example of what that looks like with my video publishing doc. Um, this is a really cool trick to teach students as well. This works for like journal prompts and um, you know, multi-chapter stories and things like that. Okay, lastly, if you want to create a clickable link that isn't part of a table of contents, we can do that as well. Just highlight any text in the document, then right click and select link. You can see that the headings and subheadings we just created are here and just click whichever one you want to link to, click apply, and you are good to go. So that's how you create internal links in Google Docs. I have a similar video for creating links in Google Slides, so I will link that in the video description if you want to take a look. As always, thanks so much for watching, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more Google tips and tricks. Susie, that helped a lot. My hands are all sweaty and I'm like clicking things and they're not working. I'm glad that worked. So that's something I can keep in mind. Now I have to figure out, A, it's still playing, so it's going to make noise in a second. But I want to escape, maybe? No. If I click, it's going to play. I don't want it to do that. Maybe you guys are in front of the button I need. Close the ad. Oh, wait a minute. Down on the bottom right. Might be the fact that my hands are not doing what I want them to do. Let's see. Escape. No, don't play. Oh, there we go. Don't ask me how I did that because I don't know. Okay. I think that video is hugely helpful. Again, it gives you an idea of how to organize stuff into a if you haven't figured out how to do that. You can also do it in Google Sites, which is nice to know. Um, and a lot of people didn't know that the whole styles even connect to an outline format. It's just a way that in, um, Word does that as well. If you are a Word user, you can also create outlines doing the same thing. But I, I love her videos. I think that she um, has a teacher's eye when she's sharing. She's not just showing you a skill, but she's also kind of giving you an idea of maybe why you would use it. So let me move on and we're going to open up my modern teacher tab, which I closed. So let's try that again. If there are questions showing up in the text, I didn't get a, um, an official volunteer. So either A, you can ask your question or B, if you read it and nobody has seen it and Susie hasn't said anything, then go ahead and interrupt me. So I'm going to go to modern teacher. Um, this is how I go there every time. I haven't even saved it as a favorite place. And when you move your faces, log in. Okay. So here I am in my professional learning modern teacher page. I'm going to close this one. So where we are working in the effective virtual learning section. And this class that you're in right now is talking about not playlists, but the learning plans, which are all just a continuum of complexity as to a playlist being the most simple way to get content and expectations and the lesson plan to students where um, advanced learning plan is an advanced way of doing that same thing. You may have heard of Hyperdocs, you may have heard of other words for this same type of thing. It's just that Modern Teacher uses these. And then that way we're all using the same language along with most of the other school systems on the Cape have been doing Modern Teacher. So if you know teachers in other districts, then it's gonna be pretty consistent a lot around all of our districts for vocabulary. By the third class, I am clearly all blah, 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 
Okay, so just to give you a walkthrough for those of you who haven't been in the earlier classes today, you are working on two different sections for each course. There's the literacy portion and the fluency portion. So the literacy is the understanding of the topic, being able to be literate about the topic and understand it in your own brain. The fluency part is being able to then demonstrate your understanding, to be able to fluently show that you understand what the literacy topics taught you. So you're earning two badges for each topic. If I close this up and pop it up, you'll find as you, and you guys are only doing the first three lessons. I've gone through and I've done other lessons just because I wanna be able to know best practices when it comes to creating an online learning environment. But like so far you can tell I've only done the literacy. I haven't done the fluency on a lot of these and this one, the literacy I'm not done with yet. So the colors just give you an idea of what's done, what's in progress, what hasn't been done. So that's their badging system. So I'm gonna go back up here. I'm gonna drop down this little triangle. And as you go through of each, as you go through each of these, you want to make sure when you open one up, you watch the video or you do the activity or you read the article or you look at the examples, whatever it is that they've put in here for you to do, you do it and then you come up here and you make sure that you've put it to complete. You can put it to in progress. That'll make it orange if you want it to. You don't have to do that. Um, you can wait till you're done and just change it to green entirely your choice but you have to make sure you do that at the end of each activity so that these little green checks start to show up so if i go back here there we go so as you make your way through and in this case you've probably already watched about beginning playlists and maybe you've started to look at the creating intermediate or looking at advanced learning plans there's examples in there there's videos that talk about them in there so I'm not literally going to teach you because all of the teaching is in this course anyway, but um, just to have an idea of what's in there. And then at the end, you have your literacy check, basically the, your ability to understand what they've presented to you. And then when you scroll on down, you have three choices. Either you're gonna create a beginning playlist, you're gonna do an intermediate learning plan, or you're gonna do an advanced learning plan. All the same thing, just different degrees of complexity. But you have to show that you've done all three, even though you're really only doing one, which I know makes no sense, but we're just gonna go with it. So let's say I was working on doing an intermediate learning plan and I don't have one. Oh, I did have one. I said in the other course that I didn't have one. I, and I actually shared it with all of you. And if you're taking the course, you might've seen it. Let me just see if I can do advanced learning. There it is, advanced learning plan. I think this is it. Is this mine? Yes. So this is my advanced learning plan. Totally forgot that I did it. Okay. So let's say I wanted to hand it in. I would want to make sure that I go up to share. Ooh. And that under my share link that I have it so that anyone can view it. It could be viewed just by Mashpee, whatever your preference is and then you copy the link. You have to have the link in order to be able to share it. Totally forgot I did this. Um, and then I go back to Modern Teacher and you go to whichever one you did. Mine was an advanced plan. So you'd go to that. They might have a few resources here that you can look up if you would like to, but you scroll down and you add attachment. And then over here, you're not going to worry about adding a file because it's not really a file that's saved on your computer. It's a link that you have created on the Google Drive. So I'm going to click to add the link. I'm going to click to add the link. There we go. My title would be Susie's Advanced Learning Plan. And then I would paste in that link that I copied from my Google Doc. And I could put a description in here if I wanted to, like right now it's not finished. I could say I still plan to add X, Y, or Z, but it was enough to get started. And then I decide who's gonna be able to see it within the modern teacher platform. Like I said, a lot of Cape Cod districts are doing this as well. It's been kind of neat to be able to see some familiar names, but um, I kept mine at all districts. I don't mind if anyone sees it. You could keep it just to Mashpee or you can say you don't want anyone to see it. And then you do select. And then down here you do save. 
So now it gets turned in and saved successfully. Now, if I wanna be able to check out other people's things, I can continue to scroll down. And then what you will see, depending on what people chose for it to be visible, if it was visible to everybody in the modern teacher thing or just to Mashpee, then you'll see them in here. So you can check out, you can see over here, there's links to their playlists and their learning plans that you can see and that might give you ideas or it might give you inspiration. They might have done something that you hadn't considered. Um, so it's kind of neat to be able to go through those. But it takes time. So if you haven't, don't, don't beat yourself up over that. Let me go back to here. I'm going to stop for a second. Are there any questions hiding in my chat? on chat there's nothing <laughs> Susie, I, can i jump in if i'm ahead of where you want to be just you can tell me we'll talk about it later but um the link to a slide landing page or play it could be for any of this if you are turning that into the publishing it to the web mm -hmm. is the link going to change i mean no the link will stay the same so whether it's a landing okay. page or anything and you publish it to the web, that link stays the same. It just, if you make any updates or changes to it, it will automatically update it on the web page. If someone's actively in that page at the time, they might have to hit refresh to reload the newest version, but it's all connected. Okay. So if in, if I'm making a new slideshow that I'm linking to my landing page but i haven't published my landing page is that link going to follow through to the website type page <laughs> i stayed with you on that question <laughs> yes yes it will so let's okay. say you've already made your learning plan or your playlist and it's awesome yep. connected it to your learning your landing page but mm -hmm. you haven't given it to me yet or it's not quite ready um, when you finally do, all of that stuff will be there waiting. You'll, of course, test it out. Um, what I suggest is emailing it to yourself at your personal email somewhere where you are not logged in to your Mashpee okay. account and just click okay. the heck out of everything to make sure it works. Or if okay. you have a good buddy, you can switch links and try it on each other's, however you want to do it. But yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And then Karen had a question. I've added a learning plan the same way, but it did not show up in the list of playlists or plans on Modern Teacher. You can contact Lizette. I wouldn't fret over it in another day or so. People are not gonna be going back in there looking at other people's examples. So if it's, as long as it's been uploaded and you show that, the, that it's in there, I wouldn't worry about making sure that it can be seen. And if you want me to, you'll have to send me an email because I will forget this. Um, send me an email. I can go into the background and see if it has like arrived where it should arrive. I have, I have those powers. Any other questions? You're very welcome. So like I said, I'm not really teaching you how to create your learning plans, but I wanted to be able to give you a forum to come in and ask questions or look for clarification or even share ideas. You can share too. So many of you are worried about sharing because it's not perfect yet. That's a teacher disease that we all have. Um, I've been learning to put under construction on all my stuff so that I can kiss goodbye my uh, need to be perfect. So we don't have time for perfect people. There are going to be kids coming to school next week. <laughs> Real live kids. All right, let me look at my list of who's in here too, because I know that I have in a few minutes. Oh my goodness, driving in Zoom is just, there we go. You have so many things open, it's tricky. It's super tricky. In a couple minutes, we'll be switching it over to my special guest. Oh, let me show you an update, by the way. Um, if you go into the blended learning um, matrix, which I've been watching clips from the matrix, the movie, if you haven't seen it, it's kind of cool. Very techy. You'll know why I like it. But here on the matrix, I have the regular matrix that you've been staring at for days. There's always a bunch of little heads up here. I'm like, look at all the people in the matrix. 
must be a tab you keep open. But what I've done is I've added a new page. A couple of cool things about this. Number one, I've been adding in any of the sessions that people have been doing during my last 10 minutes of the hour with links to those videos. Um, plus I added one yesterday, so we have some coming in the rest of the week. I do want you to notice that there are a lot of blank boxes in there and nobody is stepping up and I think you should. No guilt, but try it. And the other thing that's cool is that I have all of these slides that are connected to the main slide. When you add a new slide in, Google Slides is smart enough to adjust all those links. I don't have to go back in and say, oh, wait a minute, this is now slide three instead of slide two all of your links will still work. So don't be afraid to add a new slide in that you've already created links within or inside of or inside. So I thought I would share that. I know that's not a, well, it could be an advanced or intermediate learning plan thing if you're using slides, which is another great tool. So you can tell I like that. Let me go back to the modern teacher thing. So do you have questions or concerns, ideas? Can I I have another publish to the web question. Yes, please. <laughs> um, the idea of the, and I'm sorry, I know this is advanced playlist, but I keep going back to the landing page because that's where it all starts. Yep. The setting, my understanding of the landing pages, that was supposed to be open for everybody, but that's not just for students. Right. It should be for parents. So you, you need to, do I need, I need to have it on the setting that says public, public. not a must sign in with a MASHP yeah. account. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then and once there was, go ahead. I was going to say, once I have it all built, I'll be logging out of my school account and I'll be going in and clicking all of the links, but it would be great if everybody could check their own link. That would be really helpful, but yes. Um, no, it says when you, I'm in the Google like learn more thing. It says when you publish a chart to the web, people can see the data used to create it. Be careful when public, oh, that's just for a chart then. That, so whatever you publish out there, it doesn't show all of your links or your back work. It's just the one, like the final product is there. Right. Unless it's a chart. There you go. Okay. Yep. And you're, ta you're talking about when you publish to the web, right? When you do the publish to the web to make yes. it um, why ever we're doing that. I know you told us like hours ago. <laughs> it's okay. I'm starting it's to feel like you. <laughs> oh, it's hard. You have so much swimming in your head now. And if you've been taking a lot of these classes or yeah. taking your own, there's a lot going on in there and you're trying to connect all the dots and that's exhausting and I get it. Don't worry. Don't be so hard on yourselves. Um, but publishing to the web makes it much more easy to interact with. It looks nicer. There's no extra tools around it. So a student doesn't feel like they're going in there and then like, what am I supposed to do here? And what are all these si slides on the left? Right. It just, it looks and functions better. It's and not it, the end of the world if you don't do it, but it's, it's, is it easier to update too if it's a website? Um, yeah, every time that you update your slides, it will automatically update the published as a web thing. Or if you're doing it in Google Docs, it will publish. That will also update. Yep. Okay. But like I said, if they're on that doc or that slide published link while you're making changes, they may, may need to hit refresh. Fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? What time is it? 1.35. All right. Doing a great job with that doorbell, thank you. Um, no more questions about advanced? You can ask me a question about anything because now your heads are not gonna be able to stay in one silo all the time. So if it's how you're connecting everything, that's okay. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop recording this session in three, two, if I can find the link. <laughs> All your faces are in the way. Let's move you out of the way. Let's go to more. And I'm gonna stop this recording.
Um, 